Deep in the heart of the universe, there's a mysterious and powerful force hidden, waiting to be unlocked. It's a force that could change the world as we know it, and it's called antimatter. Let's discover what this thing is and how we could use it to turn our lives upside down. Antimatter is the science fiction fantasy come to life. You may have heard about it in Star Trek and Star Wars, but it's actually a real thing that scientists have been studying for over a century. But what is it exactly, and how is it different from regular matter? Well, let's start with the basics. You probably know that atoms are made up of tiny particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. These particles are all made of matter which is what we're all made of and what makes up everything around us. And antimatter is just like that, but with a twist. Instead of protons, antimatter atoms have something called antiprotons. And instead of neutrons, they have antineutrons. And instead of electrons, they have positrons. Almost got you there. Basically, Antimatter is made up of particles with opposite charge, spin, and other properties of regular matter. While a proton has a positive charge and an antiproton has a negative charge, and while an electron has a negative charge, an anti-electron, also known as a positron, has a positive charge. Get it? Antimatter is kind of like an evil twin of regular matter. It's the mirror image of everything that we're all familiar with. Just like how Batman has the Joker, matter has antimatter. So, if you ever wanted to know what it's like to be in a world where everything is made of the opposite, this would be your answer. And here's the best part: when the antimatter and matter particles meet, they literally annihilate each other, releasing a tremendous amount of energy at the same time. This is why scientists believe that it could provide an almost limitless source of power. Now, you might be wondering, where is all this antimatter? Why don't we have these antiparticles flying around and throwing crazy fireworks after every touch with regular particles? Actually, scientists believe that during the Big Bang, matter and antimatter were created in equal amounts, but for some reason, matter came to dominate. So when they started destroying each other, in the end, ordinary matter won by a hair. Why did it happen? We still have no idea. This is one of the biggest mysteries in physics. All we know is that in the end, that's how we got the universe we know today. Makes you wonder what our universe would look like if regular matter lost. But that's a topic for another day. Antimatter is considered to be one of the most fascinating things in science. It has the potential to revolutionize our understanding of the universe, and of course, may be a new source of energy. Imagine a fuel that could power a spaceship to the far reaches of the galaxy, or a power plant that could provide for an entire city. This is what we can get if we solve this puzzle. But how was antimatter even discovered? Especially considering that there was nothing left of it at the beginning of the universe. Well, scientists were able to discover it in a very clever way. First of all, we have to go back in time to the early 20th century. That's when a physicist named Paul Dirac predicted the existence of antimatter. He had a theory that for every particle of matter in the universe, there must be a corresponding antiparticle. This idea made a huge fuss at the time, but his theory was later confirmed experimentally. In the 1930s, another physicist named Carl Anderson discovered the positron, the opposite of the electron. It was the first known antimatter particle, and this discovery was a huge breakthrough in science. Scientists soon discovered more antiparticles, and it sparked a whole new field of study. Antimatter physics. We're still exploring it to this day. But how did we even discover these particles? Didn't we just say that there was no antimatter left after the Big Bang? Well, not really. There is some antimatter in space. It's just very rare, and finding it is a real treasure hunt. Scientists look for antimatter in space by searching for cosmic rays. 
that are made up of antimatter particles. We can also create antimatter in laboratories. Right now, scientists use super cool machines called particle accelerators for that. The most famous one is the CERN's Large Hadron Collider, which is the biggest, most famous collider in the world. These machines shoot tiny particles at super high speeds. It's kind of like a cosmic game of billiards. When these particles crash into each other, they create antimatter particles. Then, they use special containers called penning traps to store the antimatter. It's like keeping a tiny supernova in a jar. Now, thanks to antimatter, we can change our entire world. Scientists have estimated that even just a tiny bit of it, like a couple of ounces, could give you the same energy as burning millions of gallons of gasoline. So even with a tiniest amount of it, you could power an entire city for a year. It's like holding the power of a star in your hand. That's why the scientific community is working on ways to use this superpower to make our lives better. They want to use it to make electricity, like we do with coal and natural gas. In the future, it could be used as a super clean and infinite energy source. They also want to use it to power spaceships so we can travel to other planets and stars. Imagine a rocket that could take us to the farthest reaches of the galaxy, powered by the energy of antimatter. Even a small amount of it could power a spacecraft for a very long time. And that's not all. Antimatter can also be used in medicine. Scientists are trying to use it to fight cancer and make images of the inside of our bodies. It's like a super tool that can help doctors in many ways. In short, antimatter is amazing and powerful, and now we just have to figure out how to use it. And here comes the catch. Even though antimatter is super powerful, but also super tricky to make and keep around. It takes a lot of energy to make even a tiny bit of antimatter. It requires incredibly high energy inputs, making it very expensive to produce in large quantities. These are also some other problems. For example, once we've got our tiny amount of antimatter, how do we store it? We can't just put it in a jar. Antiparticles are extremely unstable and they're also attracted to regular matter like a magnet to a fridge. So, scientists have come up with some clever ways to store it, like trapping them in a vacuum or storing them in some incredibly strong magnetic fields. And even then, it's still a delicate and expensive process. These and many other reasons explain why antimatter isn't viable for large-scale production yet. If you were trying to fill up your car's gas tank with antimatter, it would cost more than a small country's GDP. But even though creating antimatter is an enormous scientific challenge, the potential rewards are huge. That's why right now, scientists are working on finding ways to produce and store it in a more efficient and cost-effective way. And if they succeed, it could become the new, ultimate energy source. Antimatter research is a fascinating and rapidly evolving field. And who knows, maybe in the future, we'll be able to power our homes and cars with antimatter. Now that would be awesome. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.